Hello and welcome back to Road Trivia, the once a day road trip trivia quiz. Today's episode is number 957. We are in the middle of the final 50 challenge. This is part 44. Today, the quiz was sent in by Steve. I'm actually not sure where Steve is from. Hopefully it's somewhere a little bit cooler than where I'm recording. Right now I'm in Wichita, Kansas. It's well over 100 degrees. I'm hot. I'm sitting in the air conditioning trying not to sweat. Good luck on today's quiz. Question number one. Before 570 million years ago, life on Earth was all one-celled. After this time, a profusion of complex creatures begins to appear in the fossil record, first noted in a region of Wales for which this geologic period is named. What is the name of this period? This period is the Cambrian period. Question number two. He created this colorful toy as a learning exercise to teach his students about three-dimensional spaces. What is the name of the Hungarian architecture professor who invented the world's most popular handheld puzzle toy? That toy is called the Rubik's Cube. His name is Erno Rubik. Question number three. The Fushima Inari Shrine in Kyoto, Japan consists of around 1,000 orange tori stretching 2.8 miles up a mountainside. It is dedicated to the rice god Inari. What is the name of the religion that holds Inari as a god? The answer is Shinto. Question number four. What groundbreaking TV sitcom family lived at 704 Hauser Street, Astoria, Queens, and consisted of a conservative middle-aged forklift operator as the breadwinner, his dingbat wife, blonde-haired daughter, and pinko son-in-law? The answer is The Bunkers, from All in the Family. Question number five. In 1945, Wallace Carruthers, working for E.I. DuPont de Nemours and Company, developed the first successful synthetic thermoplastic polymer. Many people wrongly think it is named for the two big cities of fashion. What is this material? They thought it got its name from New York and London. The answer is nylon. Question number six. Construction on this stone city in southern Africa began in the 9th century, spanned nearly three square miles, and may have been home to 18,000 people of the Shona tribe. Colonized by Europeans in the 1800s, what modern country shares its name with this monumental medieval city? The city was called Great Zimbabwe. The country is obviously Zimbabwe. Question number seven. Lots of talk these days about the James Webb Space Telescope, but before that the Hubble Telescope changed the world of astronomy. It is named for Edwin Hubble, whose observations of the motion of other galaxies provided additional evidence for what important theory in cosmology. It added evidence to the expanding universe or the Big Bang theory. Question number eight, this coating invented by Ben Jensen is thought to be the most non-reflective, blackest color commercially available, yet a private individual cannot buy it. What is the name of this super black paint?
If you get some time, you should Google this paint. It's crazy. It's called Vanta Black. It's nuts. Look it up. Question number nine. What do the following famous structures have in common? Paris's Eiffel Tower, Seattle's Space Needle, Montreal's Ile de Notre Dame, Brussels' Atomium, London's Crystal Palace, and the first Ferris wheel in Chicago. They were all built for a World's Fair or World's Expo. Question number 10. This country's ancient capital is Luang Prabang in the north. Its modern capital is Vientiane in the south, and between them lies a World Heritage Site called the Plain of Jars, an area dotted with hundreds of large, carved granite vessels. What country is this? The Plain of Jars is from Laos. Question number 11. Some people think that it's ironic, others think that it's fitting. What is the longest single standard English word that can be typed using only the letters on the top row of a standard QWERTY keyboard? Repeat letters are allowed. Just using the top line of letters, the longest word you can spell, is typewriter. Question number 12. In other countries, it was the rebellious novice in Brazil, smiles and tears in Spain, all together passionately in Italy, the melody of happiness in Greece, music in the heart in Portugal, and the celestial music is floating and is heard everywhere in Hong Kong. What is this movie called in English? The answer, The Sound of Music. Question 13. This internet meta search search engine began in 1995. It works by fetching results from other search engines like AltaVista, Webcrawler, Lycos, and Google, and displaying them all on one page. It changed its name to WebFetch in Europe in the mid-2000s. What search engine is this? This search engine is called Dogpile. Question 14. Curiously, their picture was on the cover, but not their name. After hits with Freakin' at the Freaker's Ball, Sylvia's mother, and a little bit more. Who were the big rock singers that made the cover of the Rolling Stone magazine with issue number 131 in March of 1973? Freakin' at the Freakers' Ball was by Dr. Hook and the Medicine Show. Question 15, standing 630 feet tall, and built in the 1960s for $15 million. Trams take visitors to its observation deck in about four minutes, from which visitors can look out on the Mississippi River and the surrounding city. Properly called the Jefferson National Expansion Monument, how is this structure commonly known? It is called the Gateway Arch or the St. Louis Arch. Question number 16. Petite fours are those delicious bite-sized French confections, savory appetizers, or pastries you see carried around on trays at fancy dues or beckoning from behind a glass at upscale cafes. The name has nothing to do with the number four. So what does the French term petite fours mean? The answer is Little Oven. Question 17. In golf, a birdie is one under par on a hole, meaning you sunk the ball with one less stroke than is par for the course. 
An eagle is two under par, and an albatross is three under par. What bird represents the very rare four under par? A four under par is a condor. Question 18. This sound effect was notably heard in 1953's The Charge at Feather River when a character is shot with an arrow. It has since become ubiquitous in action movies, especially those of Steven Spielberg and George Lucas, as an in joke. What is this effect called? It's called the Wilhelm Scream. Question number 19. This island country, its capital, Port Moresby, is one of the least explored places on the planet. It also has the most linguistically diverse nation. There are some 851 known languages here, although 11 of them have no known living speakers. What country is this? The answer, Papua New Guinea. Question 20. Sports teams can be named for many things. The owner, geography, local fauna, even a local poet. But what do the names of Major League Baseball teams in Houston, Milwaukee, and Seattle have in common? All of those teams are named after the significant industry in their home city. If you got anything close to that, I will accept it. So for example, Houston, the Astros, their industry is aerospace. Um, the Milwaukee Brewers, they do brewing and the Mariners are shipping. So the, the big industry in their city is what their mascots were named after. And that is it for today. Thank you for watching today's episode of Road Trivia. Check back tomorrow for the Final 50 Part 43. Um, like I mentioned at the beginning of today's episode, today's quiz was sent in by Steve. He sent in a 25 question trivia quiz. I just used the first, all of them were great. I had enough questions to just pull the first 21. I saved the last few for the live episode that's coming up in September. So we got a 21 awesome trivia quiz today. Questions were all over the place, which is exactly how we like our random trivia quizzes. Uh, all different categories, varying levels of difficulty. Some of these I had no clue about. Some of these I was very familiar with. So for me personally, I thought today's quiz was excellent. Good job, Steve. Thank you for your contribution. And good luck in the drawing in the uh, September live episode. Now, here is question 21, the tiebreaker for episode 957. Call me Ishmael. Some years ago, never mind how long precisely, having little or no money in my purse and nothing particular to interest me on the shore, I thought I would sail about a little and see the watery part of the world. Thus begins what novel? got to be one of the most iconic opening lines, opening sentences of any classic novel ever. Call Me Ishmael should have given it away. That is from the book Moby Dick by Herman Melville. All right, now we're done for the day. Check back tomorrow for another new trivia quiz. I'm getting caught up, still a little behind, but uh, there might be multiple quizzes coming out over the next couple days just to make sure we're back on track. See you then.